All right, going to do a video scripturally refuting the Roman Catholic Mass and showing that this idea of an unbloody re-sacrifice of Christ is not scripturally possible in any sense of the word. In fact, I'm going to show you that an unbloody, quote-unquote, unbloody sacrifice is actually an oxymoron when you get down to it. So first of all, what does the Catholic Church Catechism say about the Mass? Because some people will say, well, Catholics might not, not actually believe that. Well, their own Catechism says that the Mass is a re-sacrifice of Christ. This is in paragraph number 1367 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It says, The sacrifice of Christ and the sacrifice of the Eucharist are one single sacrifice. The victim is one and the same. The same now offers through the ministry of priests, who then offered himself on the cross, only the manner of offering is different. And since in this divine sacrifice, which is celebrated in the Mass, the same Christ who offered himself once in a bloody manner on the altar of the cross is contained and is offered in an unbloody manner, this sacrifice is truly propitiatory. Basically, they're saying it's part of your salvation, but notice, they're saying it's an unbloody re-sacrifice. And then again, this is repeated in paragraph number 1368, the very next paragraph. It says, uh, in, in the Catechism, the Eucharist is also the sacrifice of the Church. The Church, which is the body of Christ, participates in the offering of her head. With him, she herself is offered in whole and entire. She unites herself to this intercession with the Father for all men. In the Eucharist, the sacrifice of Christ becomes also the sacrifice of the members of his body. Uh, the lives of the faithful, their praise, sufferings, prayer, and work are united with those of Christ and with this total offering, and so acquire a new value. Christ's sacrifice present on the altar makes it possible for all generations of Christians to be united with his offering. So they're saying it's an unbloody re-sacrifice. It's not just a memorial, it is like literally a re-sacrificing of Christ, just in an unbloody manner. Which is also where you have crucifixes, because crucifixes, essentially, in the Catholic worldview, because in their worldview, Christ is still on that cross suffering. You know, if you're having to re-sacrifice him every week at Mass, he's still, he's still up on that cross suffering, so we might as well make crucifixes to depict that. But here are three points that need to be made, showing that not only is a so-called unbloody re-sacrifice not even scripturally possible, it's actually an oxymoron. Okay. First of all, the first point I need to make is that the sacrifice on the cross was bloody, and there was blood that was shed. Okay, John chapter 19, verse 34 to, thir to uh, 35. And these are scriptures your priests or popes will not show you. John chapter 19, verse 34 to 35. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and this record is true, that, and he knoweth that he saith true, that you might believe. But notice verse 34, out came blood and water. Okay, there was blood that was coming out. It was blood that was being shed. And another verse on the matter, Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. Matthew 26, verse 28. Uh, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Okay, the blood was shed. And also you compare compare this with uh, Matthew chapter, sorry, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 to, to uh, 20, which talks about how the blood, the shedding of the blood brought in, brought in the New Testament. It's that simple. And here's the next point. If this ties right into the next point that the sacrifice would be ineffectual if no blood was shed. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 22. And this is showing that this unbloody, so-called unbloody re-sacrifice is an oxymoron. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. <clears throat> and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Okay. Uh, if there's no blood being shed, you cannot have a, a quote unquote. Even if you were if you were going to try to re-sacrifice Christ, which again is still not even possible itself, but even if there was a scriptural re-sacrificing of Christ, there has to be blood that is shed. Okay, and not just in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament as well. Notice how at the beginning of the verse, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Okay, go back to Leviticus chapter seventeen, verse eleven, it says. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Even back in the Old Testament, they had to have a, a, a blood animal sacrifice to atone for sins they did before the sacrifice of Christ. So in both Old and New Testaments, the shedding of blood was needed to atone. It's that simple. So this shows that an unbloody re-sacrifice is an oxymoron. You cannot have, an, you cannot have a sacrifice that is unbloody that God will accept.
and also more, more verses on the matter. Like I said, under the Old Testament, uh, if you read Leviticus chapter 16, verse 11 to 22, Leviticus chapter 4, verse 20 down to verse 26, Leviticus chapter 4, verse 31 to 35, Leviticus chapter 5, verse 5 to 13, and other verses as well, shows that blood had to be shed from the animal to atone for sin, to cover and atone for sins, even back in the Old Testament. So like I said, an unbloody re-sacrifice is not scripturally possible and is an oxymoron. It is not a sacrifice if there's no blood. All right, so like I said, this goes right into my next point that, you know, Christ's blood cannot be reproduced at the mass because again, what is the mass? It's essentially they're trying to, they're saying that the wine is the blood of, the literal blood of Christ. So essentially they're trying to reproduce Christ's blood. However, like I written in point number three, Christ's blood can't be reproduced at the mass because the resurrected Christ in his glorified, sinless, you know, pure body has no blood. It's that simple. What's my proof on that? First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus Christ was a sinner or had, or had a body of sin. He was in the likeness of sinful flesh, okay, Romans 8, 3, but blood is basically what you have in your body to keep you alive. Because why? We have corrupt bodies of flesh. Humans do. And Christ in his glorified, you know, sinless, uh, pure body does not have blood. So you can't reproduce his blood because there is no blood to be reproduced. It's that simple. So don't be deceived. The Roman Catholic Mass is just, uh, what, what, what is uh, Colossians 3, 8 talks about, or Colossians 2, 8, sorry, talks about, you know, beware of, of man-made philosophy, vain deceit. Not remembering off the top of my head, paraphrasing a course, but that's what the Roman Catholic is. It's man-made philosophy and vain deceit. It's that simple. It's that's pagan cannibalism under the guy. It's a perversion, basically, of biblical communion. I'll put it that way. So anyway, don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.